Spacers headed for the stars. But even the best spaceship turns into a trap when monsters sneak on board. When there is no help within reach. When civilians oppose the threat. They are ready to stand tall and fight back. But first, they must find out who is the real monster. Hello my friends, welcome to my channel. Today I play like you see on the screen. I'm not a monster, really, I'm not. True retro sci-fi visuals, so let's see what this game have to offer. So let's play first tutorial to meet the game. Okay, let's see. Today's edition of Monsters from Outer Space is called How to Survive if Your Tourist Liner is Attacked by Monsters from the Depth of Space, in which we'll tell you about basic survival rules in the event of a cosmic disaster. Okay, let's see. A space tourist's first rule is first save yourself, then help <laughs> others. Yes, okay. Staring in the lead role is Frank, an experienced space tourist. He's gotten himself out of all sorts of cosmic binds and has a lot to learn. Unlike many other passengers, he doesn't panic in emergency situations and is able to fight alien invaders. Frank knows for sure that if you smell trouble, get down. When you're out in the open, you take much more damage than when hiding behind a crate, for example. That's where he is going to run to. Okay, so... This is a turn-based game in which all players act simultaneously. Each turn consists of two parts. Planning and action. Finish planning. By sending Frank to hide behind the crate, you plan the movement, your first and only action on this turn. Okay? Characters have a two action slots. This means that we can perform a maximum of two action per turn. Okay. For example, a short distance move use a, a one action slot. The cells of this area are closer to the character and are surrounded by a green line. The cells of this area are closer. Okay. From this new position, Frank notices another spot of cover, which he can easily run to. Okay. Finish. A long distance move will require two action slots. The cells of this area are located farther from the character and are surrounded by a white orange line. Okay. Frank notices more cover some distance away. He can run there if he goes all out. Frank feels that he is close to his goal and is determined to stay on the right path and to remain focused. Frank notices an emergency supply safe. Don't forget to explore it. You can find weapons and devices that will save your life. Okay, Frank. You can save icon to explore it. Uh... Great news! This safe contains a weapon. Frank takes it first. Now that you are armed, think about how to further increase your chances of survival. Churches can carry a device in their left hand, but again only one. Okay. A portable robo-dock. No bigger than a car emergency kit. Is an excellent addition to any weapon. Okay. Now Frank is ready to face the enemy. And here it is. One of the crew turned out to be a monster pretending to be a human. 
This is the Emerald Varanus of Karax, one of the most dangerous creatures from the nearby galaxies. It can impersonate any human by creating a mass hallucination. Okay. Be careful, any passenger or crew member you meet may not be who they pretend to be. The Emerald Varanus is very insidious and can impersonate a human for many years. But in this case, the monster has made a mistake and is seriously outnumbered. What's more, Frank is on. To, to plan a shoot, first select a weapon and then target. Uh, okay. What could be easier than any... Shoot from PC use while well, the remaining slot can be spent on moving. It would be better to change position and take flanking cover. Okay. Major events are displayed in the battle log. Over, over an entry to see details. Oh my god. What happens? As we can see, teamwork can defeat any monster, but it managed to injure our hero at the last moment. Okay. It's time for the wonderful first aid kit. This portable RoboDoc can administer an anesthetic injection, sew up wounds, and even perform minor surgery. The plan, treatment, select the first aid kit and then your character. Okay. So Frank has now activated the... Okay. This is tutorial. First start of this game. Saving civilians. It seems that nothing is threatening Frank's life anymore. It's time to save the others. There are a lot of frightened civilians on board. You should take at least half of them to a safe place. Okay, to win, you have to save at least seven civilians and avoid serious loses. Monsters have the opposite goal, to kill or infect as many humans as possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. From his position, Frank notices Miss Jane. She panics and Frank rushes to her to take her to a safe place. Since he's a true hero, Frank would like to save everyone, but now he can only see one goal. Finish planning. Jane notices Frank and is ready to follow her saver anywhere. Frank just needs to give her a helping hand. If a civilian is near, you can order them to follow you. To do this, click the follow button. Uh, here. Taking Jane by the hand, Frank rushes to the entrance, to a safe place. Okay. As a token of gratitude, Jane gives Frank a rare weapon she never dared to use herself. Rescue civilians leave rare weapons or devices. Okay. X radiator. Mm. Having saved a civilian's life and received a reward, Frank is feeling moral satisfaction and a surge of energy that allows him to excel. Okay. In addition to rare items, the character who saved the civilian gets a surge of energy and can run much further during this turn. But okay. it's too early to relax. Many people still need Frank's help. Okay. Advanced charism. We always okay. admire heroes for their courage and morality, but ingenuity is very important as well. When attacking monsters and saving people, heroes experience a moral surge which can give them the most unusual ideas. 
So Frank's idea was to connect the first aid kit to the X radiator so that the weapon emits waves that accelerate regeneration. Hmm. Heroic abilities depend on which items the hero is holding in their hands. There are many possibilities. Uh... Morale and ingenuity mm. may be the most powerful weapons against monsters. Okay. But there's another side to humanity. Like all people, heroes can make mistakes. Frank is going to shoot Alan. Alan didn't shoot the monster, and Frank suspects him to be one of the aliens impersonating a human. Okay. And to see what happened. And here's the price of his mistake. Once he realizes that he hurt a human, Frank's morale dips. Okay, Frank. Morale is energy for heroic abilities. Heroes lose it for shooting at other heroes or civilians. Okay. In addition, Frank is feeling guilty now. It will be hard for him to come up with any creative ideas for a while. It slows the growth of morale after good deeds. This uh, is the price for humanity. Our program wouldn't be complete if we only mentioned our space heroes' victories without telling the sad stories. Sometimes heroes die, and monsters are not the only cause. Oh, sniper. Ooh. It is in moments like this when a frightened civilian must pull himself together and assume the heavy mantle of a hero. The player whose character is dead takes control of a non-infected civilian, if any are available. Xenobiology. But we have saved the most dangerous aspects of the monsters until the end. This is the monster's ability to infect unsuspecting people. They use human bodies as an incubator for reproduction. Monsters usually attack from around the corner or by impersonating a human. First, the monster strangles the victim with its tail. And when the helpless and almost choked person tries to take a deep breath, the monster weakens its grip and spits out eggs into the victim's mouth. Mm, like in... Alien movies? Okay. Remove the infection within five turns. Within so you will... just a couple oh. of minutes, one of the eggs develops into an adult and absorbs the body from inside. Hmm. If you fail to cure infection in five turns, the character will be taken over by alien DNA and become an Emerald Warrenus 2. There are two ways to prevent this. Find the Xenophage injector, which can remove the infection, or kill yourself. <laughs> okay. But let's see what happens if you don't stop the infection. Modern TV technologies can show us how the Carex Veronus perceives our reality. These creatures are connected by a mental network that allows them to see through the eyes of each other and to sense the infected at a distance. Okay. Infected civilians are the key to the monster's survival. After death, the monsters can be reborn inside any of them. The monsters can even sense potential victims through walls. Mm. But in order to affect a victim, the monster must first abandon its human disguise. Abandoning your disguise does not require action slots and allows you to infect. Uh, 
We infected the victim should be held for two turns. It's better to do this far away from other humans. If the monster is fired upon during infection, the process won't be finished. Uh -huh. If the monster takes damage during this time, the infection won't be completed. Okay. However, the monster will still have a second chance. When a monster dies, the mental network receives a signal that speeds up the transformation of one of the infected. Monsters will be reborn as long as they are infected civilians. Heroes and monsters are always human players. Civilians are NPCs. Infection. Infect civilians and heroes in different ways. Uninfected hero has five turns to heal themselves, otherwise they become a monster. While an infected civilian becomes a monster when one of the monsters die. Okay. And so ends today's edition of Monsters from Outer Space. But our story about cosmic monsters is just beginning. In the next episode, you will learn about brain parasites from Uranus, werewolves from Arcturus 7, guests from another dimension, and other monsters from outer space. See you next time. Okay. So, people, this is the tutorial from this game, I'm not the monster. Interesting, I must admit for now. So let's see what will happen. Stay tuned, subscribe, and bye!